Okay, all flight controllers, gonna go for landing. Retro. Go. Fido. Go. Guidance. Go. Control. Go. Talcom. Go. GNC. Go. Econ. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom, we're go for landing. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is my very first YouTube video, so I'm really excited to make it, but a little nervous. Uh, today we're going to be building a water detection alarm. I'd like to start off by sharing a safety tip about soldering. So typical solder contains rosin, R-O-S-I-N. And when you heat the rosin with your soldering iron, it will make a smoke. And if you breathe this smoke over time, it can cause you to become seriously allergic. Even though it has a really nice smell, it smells like pine. Um, it's important that you avoid breathing it. So you can do this by using a fume extractor to help take away the smoke. Or you could also wear an N95 respirator. If you don't have those, just be careful not to breathe the smoke. And it's best to use lead-free solder to avoid getting any lead on your hands. If you do use lead, wash your hands well so next time you eat in a sandwich you don't also eat lead dust. Okay, uh, so this project started because my father's RV has a critical component inside the water tank, the drinking water tank, which will burn out if the tank ever runs dry. So it's actually an electric water heater probe that we're trying to protect. Uh, this heater probe heats the water in the tank whenever the RV is not running on propane. And it's basically the same concept as a beverage heating coil. And you can see a photo here. This photo shows the actual RV water heater. The lower hose is the freshwater inlet and the upper hose distributes hot water to the RV. So we need an alarm when the water inlet hose ever becomes dry. So I hope this video will inspire your electronics learning and your own project ideas. And I'll definitely link up some online resources in my video description. So the three main building blocks of this project are one, the alarm driver circuit plus a sensor, two, installing the fourth operating system on your UNO, and three, programming the UNO. Now, to make this project happen, I studied several videos from a great YouTuber and his channel Embedded Systems Design. So in step one, we need to build a circuit to drive an active piezo buzzer and an LED for the alarm and this video shows how. So here is the circuit on my breadboard. It also has a short circuit protection built in, which is another Embedded Systems video and I'll link that up as well. Now to choose a water sensor, the easiest solution was to use a non-contact proximity sensor that could detect the presence of water in the supply hose on the heater tank. And here's a cool article by Machine Design that explains these sensors and you can find cheap sensors online. I chose this NPN sensor which is powered by 5 volts and has a sensitivity set screw on the side. Okay, to attach the sensor to the circuit, it just needs a positive and a negative, and the output wire from the sensor plugs into a digital input on your UNO. Okay, now that we have our circuit, we can move on to installing fourth on the UNO. Now, fourth is really cool, and there's so much you can do and learn. In fourth, you can write a few lines of code and easily test each command in real time on your breadboard, then build your code piece by piece. And you really get a sense of how your code interacts with your circuit. There's a lot to learn, but you can get started very quickly making simple programs. So for a copy of fourth, check out the comments for a link. And this video explains the steps needed to install on the UNO. But if you try this and if you have any questions, just leave me a comment and I'll share more details. So now that fourth is installed, we need a terminal program to actually talk with and program the UNO. And this one is called ZOC7, made for the Mac. For PC, you can use one like Hyper Terminal. These are the terminal settings I used that allow me to write code into the UNO and also upload my final program text file. Now if you hit the reset button on the UNO, you should be up and running. 
When you hit enter, you get a fourth message, OK, saying that the fourth is up and running and ready to go. And this is how you use fourth's calculator function. So I'm typing 3 times 9. 5 plus 7. And typing words will pull up um, words that are stored in the dictionary. So these are command words you can actually use. Now back to the circuit. If I type pin 8 high, it will trigger the driver circuit high and the LED will come on. And then pin 8 low will turn it off. So I'll do that again. So here's the actual program that I wrote for this pro project. Uh, the top line of code are my notes. So to start the code, you type colon and the name of the program, in this case water. Then we set pin 8 as an output to control the LED and buzzer. Then set pin 4 as input signal from the water sensor. Then we go into a loop. And this says while pin 4 is high, pin 8 will toggle on and off. And 200 milliseconds sets how fast of a pulse rate you want for the LED and buzzer. The word flush helps protect your Arduino's memory, so include it after every program you write. So you can test this code on your circuit line by line in real time, which is pretty cool. And you can learn how your code affects your circuit. Now we send the code file to the terminal by going to send file. So I'm going to load my text file here. And the terminal will load the code. Now I just type my program name and hit enter. Now the program will work as long as the UNO is plugged into my computer, but it'll be erased as soon as I unplug it. To use the alarm device out in the wild, we need to make this program turn key. So to make our device run standalone, we turn to this code written by CH Tang which I'll link in the description. To make it turn key, you load your code text file. Then I'm going to type this block of code. Apostrophe water, apostrophe boot, exclamation point, and the rest of the code you see there. After the last line, hit enter, and you've got it. Now we have the circuit up and running. And here's a test with a piece of clear hose, so you can see the water in the hose. And lastly, it's important to give your projects good enclosures and a finished look. I use Kynar, K-Y-N-A-R, wire wrapping wire to attach the proximity sensor because it's very thin and it fits into tight spaces. So here's the prox sensor attached to the water hose in my dad's RV, which is below the sink. And here's the device attached to the wall with 3M dual lock fasteners. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and I definitely appreciate your comments.